plus, and then this would have been this would have been plus, and therefore over here they, they would have to define the total energy as kinetic energy minus potential. That would have been kind of weird. So that's why they, they prefer to say the potential energy of an object plus its kinetic energy is equal to its total energy. It's better to say add those two. So we get this equation. Now, what we have derived, this is known as the second form of the work energy theorem. This is the original form. Okay, this is the second form. I guess we can call this one, yeah, the second form of work energy theorem. This is actually none other than the second law of thermodynamics which you will learn in physics too. This is the second law of thermodynamics in physics. I think, okay, at this point, let's try to see why would we, would we want to sometimes use this versus using the other one, the chapter seven version. What is its advantages or does it have an advantage? Okay, let me show you the difference, how you would approach the problem if you were using this versus how you would approach it if you were using the chapter seven. Do you remember the problem that we did, this problem? That one. Uh, we did this the other day. And we analyzed it. We said, what is the minimum height? We found out what velocity it has here and what energy it has here. And then w the equation we used there was the the total work is uh, changing kinetic energy, right? If I was going to do this, I myself, I would use this uh, formula instead. Okay? Here's how I would approach this. I would say work on uh, work external plus work friction is changing internal energy. Okay, and then in this case, there was no external force doing work, so this was zero. Work of friction was uh, this one, uh, minus mu k and d. Then this flat one, minus mu k uh, prime n prime d prime, that's the flat one, minus uh, this one was the work done along the circle. Fk times half the circumference. And then I would set that equal to the change in total energy of the object. Now, what's missing here on the left side? What's missing that we, uh, that we had on the other, uh, the other day? Yeah, the work done by gravity is missing on the left side. Because remember, in this chapter, we took the work of gravity and we put it on the right side, expressed as a potential energy. So you're no longer going to ask the question, how much work did gravity do? You're no longer going to ask the question, how much work did the spring do? You're, on the left side, you're only going to have the work done by friction, this, this, this. And then you're going to have here, change in total energy, Potential final plus kinetic final minus potential initial plus kinetic initial. You see what happened? Back in chapter seven, we would we didn't have u final, u initial. We just had KF, K initial, these two were over there, okay? This, now we have U final, U initial, and then you here you continue like before. That one doesn't change. And then over here you have the potential energy of the object up here. That would be MG, U final would be MG 2R, right? That would be this one here. KF would be the kinetic energy that it has there. U initial will be what? 
the potential energy that the object had up here, which is MGH. And then the kinetic energy is 0. Now, what's the difference? The other day, this one was over there, MGH. And then this one was over there as negative MG2R. Now, why is it, why did I say that I prefer it this way? Is it just a matter of these two over there versus these two over here? I mean, big deal, what's the difference? The reason why I say that is because it's a little easier to visualize the potential energy of the object as on this side versus asking the question, how much work did gravity do? Do you remember the other day when I was solving this problem and uh, I was coming down and then I, would, I, I was analyzing it, do you remember I forgot the work done by gravity as it was going up? I forgot to put that in, the work done by gravity as it went up. And then somebody reminded me, uh, you, they, he said, uh, you forgot the work of gravity as, it, as the object goes up. That's typical. A lot of students, if they try to do the problem uh, the, that first way, they forget the work of gravity. Because the work of gravity is easier to visualize as potential energy, you see? If I had done that problem this method, I would never have forgotten the potential energy, you see? Because when you're analyzing it with potential energy, you would ask the question, what is your final? Then you would visualize the object there, and you can't forget that it has potential energy. It's up here, right? Mg2R. Okay? And then U initial, MGH. So it's less likely that you're going to forget about potential energy, but sometimes you will forget about work of gravity, as I did. I purposely forgot it because I wanted to give this talk today, you know. I, I really usually don't forget it, but I purposely forgot it because I knew today I would mention about it, <laughs> okay? But no, I really, I've seen a lot of times students do problems, they approach it with the uh, work total equals change in kinetic energy, and then I look at their steps and they forgot the work of gravity, okay? So I suggest you, you instead of using work of gravity, do potential energy on this side. And then you will, very rarely you forget, okay? So, um, and plus, it's, uh, potential energy is a little bit better co construction, a little better to understand what's going on than asking the question, work of gravity. I think with that,